sorry about the wind, but we've got 11mm OSB here, got 18mm OSB there. What we're doing on this one, as I mentioned before, this is going to be what's called a warm deck, where the last one that I did was a cold deck. I'll just explain the difference now. On a cold deck, you have the insulation in between the joists, here like this. On a warm deck, you have the insulation above the joists and above the fairings up on here. And so what that means is you end up doubling up the amount of OSB that you use, but they're slightly different sizes. So the first one that we put down on here is an 11 mil sheet of OSB. Once we've done the 11 mil, we put 120 mil of Kingspan, and then we put the 18 mil skin of OSB on the top of that, and then there's the rubber roof system. But that explains why we couldn't have this steel beam all the way up at the top where the original ridge beam is, because it would obviously be way too high. So we've started getting these sheets of OSB up. All of the sheets are on the scaffold and we're just starting to get them in. And what we'll do is we'll slide them up in between the rafters, lay them on top, nail them down using some short screw, some short nails. Then we'll put the king span over the top. Then we put the 18 mil. And then what we have is we have, I don't know if you can see those down there, but those are 200 mil screws, which drive all the way down from the top down into the fairings there and secure the whole lot down so it pulls everything down really nice and tight the whole way through so that's the that's the plan so why would you do a warm deck over a cold deck well a warm deck saves you a ton of time theoretically it gets you better insulation u values because it's continuous uh, it's a continuous sheet of insulation right whereas here obviously it's broken up by the joists and then you have to do 20 mil of overboarding inside the room so you lose a bit of head height that way you also have all of this space available to you afterwards to run your cabling and your lights and everything like that so it's a much much quicker system so from now on whenever i do a loft i'm just going to do warm decks like warm decks like this because it's quicker it's easier it's better insulated and it means you've got a, a far greater chance of having a service void in here. Also, it means you can frame out here with a seven by two. Whereas on the, uh, the last roof I did, you had to do a nine by two so that we could fit all the insulation in and still have a bit of say, say, uh, space for the lights. So yeah, a warm deck is definitely the way to go. This is going up super quick. We've got all of these 11 mil OSB board's almost done now. Sorry about the noise of the wind, not a lot I can do about that. Got these notched out. We've set that to a really shallow de depth of cut, just 11 mil, just kissing the bottom of it and then snapping them off. Butting them up, staggering the joints, as you can see, staggered. And uh, yeah, sliding them along and slotting them in. It's going in really quickly. And then we're just nailing them in kind of every 200 the whole way along the board all the way along so yeah very fast work on top of this we'll go the PIR and then 18 mil of OSB that stuff down there insulation's getting up there ready for the warm deck right so as I just showed you we've got all these up here and now what we're doing is we're just putting these five by twos around the edge. There's a skirt the whole way around to help contain them. Like that. That goes the whole way around. There is no need to felt and batten the roof. When you have a, a cold deck, once you've put the furrings on, once you've put these furrings on, you then counter batten them to allow an air gap. But you don't need to do that in this instance. The insulation just sits straight on top, so you put this all the way around and as you'll see what we're doing is getting nice and flush all, of a, all up against the edge there the whole way along these little nails we can take out that's fine so it gets nice and flush all the way around the edge just a couple more little holes to fill that bit there Got one over there one there and a couple along here and we're done and that is it that is the that is the roof insulated 
we put some 18 mil OSB over the top and we're done and that is that all of the insulation is in and on and the roof is insulated and warm as the name suggests so that's nice and tight we've cut at an angle to accommodate the joists that are going to be coming up and running in through here with the new roof uh, we've just kind of guessed the angle to be honest it's not it's not that crucial at this stage so yeah that's good so now what we do is we get these 18 mil boards the really heavy ones lift them up put them on and drive them down with the big heavy screws big long screws there final piece of the puzzle on this section for us to do is just to go around we're gonna pin them around the edge with that and then we're gonna screw them down with the really big long screws straight down into the boards so it's good I'll show you what it looks like when it's done done very very solid flat and strong this whole thing the whole structure is really really become very solid underfoot now we've been driving these huge screws straight down and about that much of it goes into the fairings and the joists so if I show you we follow follow the line of screws along straight down there into that so it's really sturdy very very solid the whole way around so I'm really pleased with that and now we can move on to other bits now we're measuring and cutting these 4x2s which we're then putting straight across putting straight across the front and the side and these allow us then to put on the fascia boards and the uh, the drain pipes and everything like that so we have just we've put, you saw we put the 2x4 on and then we put the 6x2 on the 2x4 gives us enough allowance so that on the face of the dormer and on the cheeks of the dormer the whole way round we can put our OSB board and then the tiles and then that will mean that the fascia board comes down and sits perfectly above the tiles on here it kind of acts like a spacer that allows room for the tiles and then means that the fascia board when it sits on the front laps over exactly where the tiles need to be it's a bit difficult to show you from this angle and obviously it's not in yet but it will be and you'll see what I mean uh, when we come to it now what we're going to do is put these on here is the kind of the drip beads which allow enough space for the guttering so now we've got the 2x4 the 6x2 and the batten the 25 mil batten which runs all the way along here and then we like to put this nice little step detail in here it just looks nice overlaps and allows you to nail in this way nice and strong and we double batten the front because this allows you space for your guttering and the overhang and for it all to or for, for it all to go down it's very hard to show you all this from the top it's going to be much easier to show you from the bottom it's also going to be easier to show you when we're actually doing it but always remember you double up at the top you have the, you finish your your roof then you have your 2x4 6x2 and double batten and that's a double batten across the front and only a single batten on the side and again we've done this little step detail here Two hundred over. Uh, 1200 over 200 over, 200 over yep Over. Yeah. So we're just measuring up here. We did 200 over on the edge and 150 over on the front. And we're just taking the measurements and writing them down so that the rubber roof people know what their measurements are going to be. So it's 580 by 460. This is what it looks like from underneath just allow space for the tiles to come up allow space for the fascia board to come down and allow space for the 
gutter to run across. So that's the right way to have it. And you'll see there's a nice slope on that roof running right down to where the gutter is at the front. So that's good. That's a good day's work. Nice and straight and flush.